Kim King in Target. You protect me with an opaque curtain and a plexiglass shield. Marcel Marceau, my name behind PPE. Your Maybelline mascara is luscious and we share glances at roots revealed in center parts. No heel clicks behind me. Everyone wears sneakers or sandals. No small talk, but a cartwheel squeak squeak nearby, pushed by a cyclops with an N95 on his forehead, not on his face. We may have smiled. We are fused first by commerce, then joined by an arc of safety that protects us from invisible particulate matter. We are stiff figures figuring how to connect through plastic, where you pass the paper receipt through the mouse hole in the barricade, and I take it by two fingers that I'll sanitize with gel outside. We both mumble something like thanks, filtered through our cotton mask. observation or a metaphor that I see in the world. Uh, for example, I saw a man screaming very close range at a woman inside a store while she was powering by boxes of candy. And I was simply paralyzed that she was being abused. The image stuck in my mind and I wrote a poem about it. I, I wrote a lot of poems over the past year during quarantine. I've written about my family, about places about events like the Capitol riot on January 6th. Um, it's just my way of memorializing a moment in history or reliving a memory or preserving an experience. And it's also very cathartic. Um, I wrote a number of poems during my cancer diagnosis and treatment, and it seems to really help to write things down. Well, this poem is about the first time uh, I went to Target for groceries after our state's initial two-week lockdown. Uh, the silence in the store was so weird and compounded by the awkwardness of social distancing because we hadn't really done that before. It was my first time out wearing a mask, I was afraid to touch anything, and when I left the store, I just sat in my car for a couple minutes and I said, that's a poem. Um, I actually wrote it several different ways. Um, I was thinking about welders in my notes, uh, and I started to write it from the standpoint of two welders with plexiglass dividers and the masks, like welders' equipment, and then I thought of a welding statue by Picasso, but I was getting off target. Um, I experimented with the line lengths and stanzas, and then I decided against writing it with any rhyme or meter. So it's 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 not um, a sonnet. It's just a narrative poem. Uh, I think the pandemic sort of threw everyone off, and I thought that the poem should be in a conversational style. Um, a lot of poets don't say that the poem determines the form, like after you write it, you decide, well, I wrote this as a sonnet, or I wrote this as whatever. It reminds me of Harry Potter, you know, the wand chooses the wizard. But uh, that's kind of how I think. So the form was just what I decided worked with it. Well, I think, first of all, you have to be very observant. Uh, I have notes I put in my phone sometimes that become poems later on, like a scene or a word or a description. Uh, and then you also have to ask, like, what's the purpose? Like, a poem should be more than just a description. Uh, something has to happen. Something has to move you emotionally. I love narrative poetry because there's a story that sort of unfolds in the poem. 
And then once you get that story down, you go back, <clears throat> play with the line break. Um, I try not to end my lines with conjunctions or weak words. I, I try to end them with a strong word. Um, I want the reader's eyes to flow from one line to the next. So um, that enjambment of not having punctuation uh, at the end of a line and you just flow to the next line, like falling, um, that I think is important. Um, and you have to revise. I mean, sometimes I'll write something and decide it's not going anywhere and I'll just leave it alone like for a month or a year, and then I'll go back and finish it. Or I'll throw it away. Or I'll just bring one column into two columns. Um, I don't know. It's just what you observe or smell or taste or remember. Anything can be a poem. Um, I think, first of all, you need to read it out loud. Um, you read it, read it slower than you would normally read something so that you can savor the words. Um, I don't know, I just think you need to, to read clearly and slowly, out loud, and just let the poem sort of wash over you. Um, there's a, Billy Collins, who's a, a poet, wrote this great explanation about when you read a poem, you should just water ski across the surface of it. And you're not supposed to feed it by a hose, with a hose to find out what it means. Poetry is not complicated. It shouldn't be difficult or hard to decipher. It's just beautiful words arranged in a thoughtful way. And when you get to the end, you should just go and sigh. That's what I think. Oh, well, there's so many. Um, I really love the poetry of Ted Kuzer. Uh, he's from Nebraska and writes poems that sort of leave you wanting more about everyday things. And, for example, he wrote one called At the Cancer Clinic, and it's just the image that everyone could relate to, seeing a cancer patient, going to the hospital, being helped by two family members. But... How do you write that and not get all sappy and sentimental? Well, he ends it with this beautiful line, Grace fills the clean mold of this moment and all the shuffling magazines grow still. It hits you in the gut. That's how you should react to a poem. It should hit you in the gut. Mm -hmm.